What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So a while back I did a review video on the Harbor Freight MiG-170 welder and you guys seem to really like that video. I really like that welder. So it inspired me to do today's video. A few months back was my birthday way back in September. So I decided to pick myself up the Prime Weld TIG 225 and give this thing a shot. I wanted to spend a little bit of time with it and uh, get to use it a little bit and learn it and see what I like and dislike about it before I went ahead and made a review video. So that lands us at today. So we're gonna break this machine out. We're gonna see what we do and don't like about it. I am by no means an experienced welder. I haven't really TIG welded in probably about 10 years. And in that time period, I have also lost full vision in my right eye due to an accident. So that is another challenge that I've been trying to learn with as far as TIG welding goes, because a big key to TIG welding is your distance. Um, that's been kind of a challenge for me as with one eye you have no depth perception whatsoever. I can't tell how far I am from the metal with the torch. So I've been trying to teach myself some little tricks like using my pinky and things like that to try to help me along. I have been able to lay some pretty decent beads. It's just a little bit more challenging than it would be for a lot of people. So if you guys aren't already, please think about subscribing and ringing the bell. That way you get notified anytime we put out a video with the GTO, the Duramax, or the Hellcat. Let's jump right into today's video. So we've had this box kicking around for the last couple days. I haven't had a chance to open it as we've been working on the trailer project and trying to finish the GTO up. But my birthday's coming up in a couple days here. And like I said, uh, I got this thing for myself as an early birthday present. So we're going to go ahead and get it set up on this cart. I'm going to spare you guys the unboxing video. Not really my thing. If it's something you guys want to see in the future, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and skip it. So let's get it set onto this cart right here and uh, we'll see what all it comes with and we'll go from there. So let's get it set up on this cart. Let's see if I can do this. All right guys, so we got it put together here. Thing looks like a really sweet machine, not gonna lie. I'm super excited to try this thing out. Not sure if we're gonna try aluminum right off the bat or if we're gonna try a little bit on some steel. Um, all around seems like a super nice machine. Like. For the price, I honestly can't believe it. The pedal seems good. I heard some uh, questionable things about the pedal when I was looking into these things, but this pedal looks different than the one I was hearing bad things about, so that's good. I felt that it feels pretty good. All the connectors feel great, just like you would expect off of any machine. The knobs were one of the other things that were, uh, I don't wanna say a turn off for me, but they kinda had me double guessing my decision when I was getting ready to order, because I mean, let's be real, it is nice to have a digital display, but one of the things I really like about having these knobs is that when we're welding a certain material or we're doing something and we really like our settings, I can go ahead and take a picture of the front of the machine and then just do like a little note on the screen and save it into a folder and we will know if we ever weld that material again we can go back to that folder and flip through and find the material and we know exactly what settings we liked so that's a cool feature whereas with the digital one some of you can some of them you can save them not sure how many presets you can save on all of them but uh this way we basically have unlimited presets we just got to scroll through pick what we're using and we can set the dials to what we want so other than that though the uh the knobs feel really good the switches feel really nice the machine itself feels really good. The torch, uh, flex head number 17 CK Worldwide Torch, huge bonus for this price machine. I've always liked CK Worldwide Torches, so that's really awesome to see. The ground clamp looks really good. Um, I mean, I might upgrade it in the future, but it looks like a decent one. It's got the uh, woven uh, strap there, so that's cool. A lot of protection on the machine itself. You've got these nice corners, nice beefy handle. Let's go around to the back. Nice power cord, on off switch. Not really the best thing about the machine. Uh, just kind of feels a little cheap to be honest. But other than that, thing seems pretty sweet. Comes with a nice flow meter here. Uh, what else? 
really don't have a whole lot else to say about it yet until we fire this thing up and give it a try. Just all around seems like a pretty good machine, especially for the money. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't look cheap. Looks like a pretty nice machine. It is a little bit taller than I thought it was going to be. It's not really heavy, but it's not super light either. But uh, since you can do dual voltage 110 or uh, 220, I could see myself throwing this in the back of the truck or the back seat and bringing it somewhere if we had to go get something done. So that's also a huge plus. It also comes with some awesome packaging here. I mean, I think this thing could have gone through a tornado without a problem. That foam is super thick. They had all kinds of nice corners in here. If I could find one, here they are. So we've got all these metal corners were in the bottom of the box. But other than that, guys, I don't really have anything bad to say about the machine. It looks pretty sweet so far. So uh, let's go ahead and try this thing out, run it through its paces and see what we think of it. All right guys, so now that we got that thing out of the box and up on the cart, I wanted to go ahead and give you a quick rundown of some of the things that I got for this machine. So I'm gonna show you right here, we've got my little welding corner. Works out pretty good. I'm trying to make use of the space that I have. We actually did a YouTube shorts on when I built that little welding table out of scrap metal I had in the backyard. But you can see we've got the titanium 170 and then the prime weld. I've got the prime weld set up because that's what we're going to be using. One of the first things I went ahead and got for this machine was this sleeve. It's just a protective sleeve. I think I got mine from Yes Welder. Um, helps so that if I'm MIG welding and some spatter hits the ground or something, it's going to help from burning through the gas hose, um, which is really nice and flexible, by the way. And then one of the next thing I bought was this TIG torch holder. Uh, I was setting it down on the table like this and it would keep sliding and everything else. So now when it's hot or whatever, you can just stick it right up in there, give it a pull, it's not gonna go anywhere. I also use that for the MIG, it works great. Then I think the next thing I bought was this tungsten stick out gauge basically. You just take your TIG torch, you loosen up the um, collet or collet body and your tungsten will drop down and you just put it flush so that it sits like that. We're using a number five cup. So you'd use the number five hole obviously. And then you can just go ahead and tighten it down and that will give you stick out. So that has been super helpful for me personally. Then one of the next things I bought was this Weld Metals Online kit. Uh, it comes with a bunch of metals, a bunch of different uh, TIG rods and you got aluminum, steel, and the cube kit, that's been super helpful. Instead of trying to make your own coupons, it's a lot quicker to just buy them. They're pretty good price. And then one of the better things that I had bought here is this cup kit from eBay. It was pretty cheap, great for a beginner. If you screw it up, who really cares? It comes with gas lenses and a bunch of stubby cups. We're gonna be using the number five today without a gas lens. It also comes with some glass cups here, if I can get one out. which seemed to help me quite a bit because then you can see the arc a little bit better. So those are really nice to have. Comes with a whole bunch of them. So if you break one, not a big deal. And then one of the other things I really like having for doing like aluminum piping and stuff is we took this little vise that I got at Harbor Freight, ground the paint off the bottom so that it could ground to our welding table, and then just made this little V out of aluminum. So you can set pipe right in here, weld it or tack it and then roll it. And uh, it seems to work out pretty good. So let's go ahead and get the machine fired up and start welding. All right guys, so I've got some welding rod out here. I'm using the ER4043. And then I've also got one of my 16th inch coupons from Weld Metals Online. I use some acetone to clean both of those and then I go ahead and throw them in here and then seal the top. So I've got like a little flammable jug. I think it's a cat litter bin or something. It works really well. One thing I did forget to mention when I was telling you guys about what I got when we got this welder is a decent auto darkening helmet. You don't have to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I got this one at a local main oxy, which is a welding supply company up here. And uh, this was their brand, it's called the Striker Plus, and it was under $100, and it has been a fantastic helmet. I've used the crap out of it, MIG welding and TIG welding. And so far, I really like it. 
Also, I forgot to mention, get yourself some nice TIG gloves. They're a lot thinner than MIG gloves, so be careful. You can burn your hand a lot easier, but it's a lot easier to move around. They're a lot more flexible, so you can run the TIG rod. So let's go ahead and get set up here. I think we're going to do a few different arc starts on this coupon here, maybe run a little bit of rod across it, and then I'm going to grab some uh, aluminum piping. I think I've got some Vibrant piping and some uh, other piping laying around and we'll go ahead and see if we can stick a couple of those together all right guys so i've tried this a couple times i don't know if the high frequency is messing with the camera the high frequency starts of the welder but i'm gonna go ahead and try this again hopefully this one works just keep shutting off on me so let's go ahead and try this again so i'm gonna do a couple starts um arc starts to show you guys how steady this thing is and then with no filler i'll just run a line or two and then if the camera's still working, I'll try doing a couple with some filler rod. Alright guys, so here's one of those coupons. Not a professional welder by any means. Any uh, defect here is my doing, not the welder. The welder's doing great. Uh, the biggest thing for me is that whole depth perception thing. I'm having a really hard time judging my distance. Uh, it just kind of throws me off. I feel like if I didn't have the depth perception issue, I could probably be making these look a lot better. But, let's go ahead and turn our pulse setting on i'm going to put the pulse on and i'm just going to put it on low i've got them set somewhere about where i want them to be so let's go ahead and try that so i, I want to show you guys how the pulse feature works all right guys so i'm an idiot i forgot to start the camera but i'll do it again so i wanted to show you guys the pulse here and I just did it on this piece of metal, but we're gonna do it again just so you guys can at least see how it works. I have it turned down super slow so that you guys can see it in action. Um, you can turn it all the way up to basically to the point where you wouldn't even realize it was happening. But like I said, I'm gonna over, over dramatize it or dramatic dramaticize it. I don't know how you'd say that. But I'm gonna make it slower so that you guys can see what's going on. You can see it kicks up, kicks down, kicks up, and then it. you can set everything you need to set from your frequency to your base current to your uh, upslope, downslope, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that I have welded, and then uh, we'll take another look at the machine here, go over a few things I like and dislike, and we'll wrap this thing up. All right guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that I've welded. These are just uh, bench demonstrations. I didn't wanna go ahead and throw a ton of welding in the video because I don't have special lenses to uh, darken it so that you guys can actually see the welding. So it's really more of just you watching a bright flash. So I didn't really wanna go and throw too much of that stuff in there. So I'm just gonna show you some of the stuff that I have welded. Um, I am by no means a professional welder. I know I mentioned it before, so try to be easy on me down in the comments. But if you guys have any tips or tricks that can help me do better, 
please feel free to share them down in the comments. I am always trying to learn and progress my skills in any way that I can. So we've got a couple little pieces here. We'll start with these coupons. I think most of them came out pretty good. I am trying to teach myself here and I don't really, like if something's not right, I'm not 100% sure on how to fix it. So I've been reading and watching videos and stuff. I think it's coming out pretty good. Um, anything wrong with these welds is definitely me and not the welder. So these ones started coming out pretty good. Uh, about a week ago, I started teaching myself how to do pie cuts, and I think they're coming out pretty decent so that I can make any bends I need for when we get to doing the charge pipe for the ProCharge GTO. So I started off by using some mild steel I had laying around, and I think they came out pretty decent. I mean, they're obviously not like gorgeous or anything, but the pipe is definitely stuck together, and I think it's pretty much leak free. Um, again, teaching myself, I'm pretty happy with that. So then after I got that done, I went ahead and did the same thing with aluminum. I think it came out all right. Um, I would definitely like to perfect the aluminum a lot more because I feel like that's what I'm gonna be working with most of the time. So all in all, I think this machine welds exceptionally well, especially for the price point. Uh, I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a welder that will do everything that this one does and be on this type of budget. There are a few things that I'm not in love with on this machine. Number one being the fan. Let me go ahead and kick this thing on for you guys real quick. It's not like ridiculously loud, but it's kind of loud. If I had to listen to it all day, if I was just in here welding all day, it would probably get annoying. I know some machines, the fan only comes on when it needs to and shuts off when it doesn't. But again, for this price machine, I think that's something I can totally live with. Now, let's get that thing shut off. Another thing that I'm not in love with is the dials themselves. I don't mind that there's dials or knobs, but they're kind of, they feel a little bit on the cheap side and I don't know. And I don't like how with the knobs, you don't know 100% what you're at. Uh, you know with the welding current because it shows on the display, but some of the other knobs, you're just not 110% sure where you are. But other than that, guys, I really don't have too much bad to say about it. The pedal works great. The CK Worldwide Torch that it comes with, you really can't complain about that thing. It does phenomenal. Uh, if you're welding some thicker aluminum, it's obviously going to get hot because it's a gas-cooled torch. But you can always add the water cooler to this machine, which I think is really awesome. If I start doing more aluminum work, I will definitely be picking up their water cooler. So all in all, guys, I have been really impressed with this little prime weld. I think for the price point, I was expecting something a lot junkier, I guess I could say. Uh, but it has really impressed me. I think for under $1,000, this is the perfect beginner, like hobbyist level welder. I think it's uh, very expandable. It gives you a little bit of gr room to grow and it also has everything you need to hone in your welding skills. So as always guys, I appreciate you for watching the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you get notified anytime we put out a video with the GTO, the Duramax, or the Hellcat. And we will catch you on the next one.